The story I'm about to tell you begins in the 1990s in the UK. And I'm living in a little house which we call a semi-detached with a small front garden and a small back garden and I just moved in. Coincidentally, at the same time, one of our family friends had moved into a nursing home. And she had heard about the fact that I got this new house and she said, well, if Harley would like a lawnmower, I've got one that I don't need anymore. And I did. And so I went to collect the lawnmower from her house and this is it. Now, it may look very old fashioned to you, um, but and it was rather old fashioned with this little petrol tank at the top. But I thought it was great. Now, I tried to start it, as you can imagine, and uh, swore and cursed a few times. But then I realized, ah, there's a little filter thing that's dirty. So I cleaned it all up and put things back together. And I pulled the cord and it started first time. And it started first time for me every time I used it thereafter. I loved that little lawnmower made by Atco with its Briggs and Stratton engine. And I was very proud of it. And I would walk up and down the lawn, up and down, up, well, only about five times because it was a, an English house and it was a very small grass. But in a few minutes it was done and I would carefully clean it and put it back in the shed for the next time. Now, in 1995, I moved with my wife from England to Belgium. And in Belgium, we had a big lawn, lots of grass. But nevertheless, every Saturday when I, the grass needed cutting, I would walk up and down, up and down, cutting the grass with my faithful little Atco lawnmower. Except for one Saturday. It was hot, very hot. And I was in my shorts and I had my sun hat on and I was walking up and down, cutting the grass as merry as merry can be. When my neighbour, Roger, comes round from next door, and this is the neighbour who knows everything, who's got everything, who's been everywhere, who's got a more expensive watch. He's just everything. It's Harley Plus Plus. And he's sitting there in the sunshine on the terrace, sitting and chatting with my wife. No problem. But they're laughing, and I know that they're laughing at me. I can just feel it in my bones. And I'm walking up there thinking, oh, please, please, go away, Roger. Then, the next thing I see, my wife is bringing out a bottle of white wine from my cellar and putting it on the table, and they're drinking wine. So anyway, so I'm going a bit faster now, and I'm walking up and down with my lawnmower, and I'm putting it on full throttle, to make sure it's really going well and I'm back and up and back and down and back and down <sighs> finished great wipe in the shed straight to the table oh that wine looks great and my wife said no 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 you stink oh my goodness no go and have a shower first before you come and join us bloody hell it's like being a child again huh so I go upstairs and I have my shower and I come back down Roger's gone bottle's empty well that's a nice thing isn't it but my wife is looking at me rather strangely and She's saying, Scutcher, and she always says that, that's like Flemish for darling. She always says that when something important's about to happen. She says, Scutcher, I think it's time we buy a new lawnmower. I said, what? Are you crazy? There's nothing wrong with the lawnmower. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. My, my, my auntie Janet gave me that lawnmower. It's, why would we want to change it? She said, I think it's time. And she said, why don't we go to the shops and buy a lawnmower today? And I said, well, today, now, no, I mean, I mean, no, 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 it's too late anyway. And she said, oh, yes, indeed, it's gone 12 o'clock. But next weekend, we're going to buy a new lawnmower. All week, I'm going along and I'm thinking, trying to, trying to do my work, trying to focus. And I think, lawnmower, lawnmower, why on earth a new lawnmower? I don't want this. Anyway, Saturday comes along and I pretend to be asleep, I'm lying in bed, but my wife unusually gets up early and she's downstairs and she's banging and clashing and crashing and I think, oh, for God's sake. I'm thinking, maybe she's forgotten. Maybe, please, Lord, she's forgotten. And then she does something really, really unfair, to be honest. It should be in the Geneva Convention for Human Rights, this one. She then starts cooking 
bacon, eggs and bacon, and then she puts coffee on. And that smell wafts up the stairs. And for me, a humble Englishman, eggs and bacon in the morning with coffee and toast. Oh, and fresh mushrooms. No, that's, that's impossible. So I have to get up. So I get up and go downstairs. She says, oh, hello, morning, darling. Here you are. Nice cooked breakfast. And I'm thinking, this isn't normal. This isn't normal. This is Saturday. It's not Sunday. And it's not the first Sunday of the month. I mean, what's going on? And she said, oh, we're just in time to go to the shop. And I said, shop? Hmm? What, which, which shop? Sorry, I, I really, really didn't know. She said, yes, we're going to buy a lawnmower today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there time? Is there time? She said, yes, there's time. Now hurry up. So I eat my, lunch, uh, my breakfast. And off we go to the shop. We go into the shop, and I tell you, it's full, full of lawnmowers. You can't imagine it. It's just huge. And there's no one in the shop yet. But there is the sales guy, and he's hungry. I can see it in his eyes. He's hungry to make a deal. And I'm coming in there, and he starts asking me all these questions. Now, now, how big is your garden? And what is this? And what have you got to that? And that? I think, oh, God, all these questions. And what kind of fuel? I mean, I just want a lawnmower. I, no, I don't want a lawnmower. And he starts showing me. There was a red one and a yellow and a green one. And I said, green, a yellow? Who on earth has a yellow lawnmower, for God's sake? Anyway, we're going on and on and on, and he's showing me all these things, and he's going through prices, and he said, he gave me a price of 3,000 euros. 3,000 euros for a lawnmower. Bloody hell, I don't want to buy the shop. I'd... Anyway, my wife is getting rather cross because there's now people coming into the shop, and it's getting rather busy. There's only like 20 minutes before it closes, and obviously the lawnmower, the sales guy, is really getting a bit pissed. I mean, I can feel it in my bones. So I just say to him, look, I'm really sorry. I know I'm not the ideal customer. I said, but can I just have a piece of paper and a pencil, please? And he goes, pardon? And my wife says, oh, please, just give him the pencil and the paper. So he gives me a, a, some scruffy kind of notepad with the name of the company on it and a, and, a, and, a, and a biro, which has got a bit of ink around the edge of it. And I'm crouching down in the shop and I'm just crouching down on my own by now my wife is just looking out of the window she's gone I mean she's she's the other way and all the other people seem to be busy buying their lawnmowers and I'm just writing down and I'm writing and I'm thinking and at a certain point I tear the piece of paper off and I fold it and I put it in my pocket and I say to my wife darling you know I love you don't you she looks at me and she's really cross. I can tell you she is cross. I said, you, you know I love you. But I want to leave this shop and I want to leave now. I promise you. Let's go and get a coffee and I promise you everything's going to be fine. Anyway, you can imagine. She says sorry to the guy and storms out of the shop and I'm going out. She said, what the hell? I said, darling, what we need is not a lawnmower. It's a bicycle. Let me explain to you what I wrote down in the shop. On my piece of paper, I asked myself, why? What's the problem my wife is trying to solve? What's the problem I'm trying to solve? Why am I here buying a new lawnmower? Why? Am I buying a new lawnmower? And then I realise it's probably to save time. I think it's probably, my wife is probably thinking she wants me to save time. Maybe I'm, because I'm working so hard during the week and I'm always away, maybe she wants to see more of me on the weekend. Maybe she's embarrassed. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing it might be to save time. And I wrote down, what do I like about the way things are right now? What I like about it is my lawnmower. I keep fit and I feel good afterwards. It's my workout session. What don't I like? An unhappy wife. I don't like having an unhappy wife. The criteria based around this whole discussion this morning has been about the looks, the colour, the style. They're all irrelevant. Size. For me, the smaller the lawnmower, mower, the better, because then I can keep it in the garage and I can keep the car in the garage. The weight, 
The lighter the better. I need to get it up and down the steps into the garden. The type of fuel, the lawnmower, the lawnmower sales guy is going on about the type of fuel. It's irrelevant. Of course it should be as green as possible, I wrote. Fuel, green as possible. And then I looked out and I thought, right, mini business case, mini business case. Let me think. The number of times it's going to be used, I guess it's about nine months of the year. We need to cut the grass. It's probably two times a month, sometimes three. Let's say over five years. The lawnmower's finished in five years. These modern things are made of plastic. They're not like my old Atco. They're junk. So let's say, actually, that's about 90 times. Now, the cost of the purchase of this ride-on mower he's going on about, I need a ramp, but let's not talk about the ramp or a garage or a shed to put it in. Just the cost of the lawnmower, 3,250 euros. Now, the maintenance, I'm guessing, I didn't get that far, would be around about 150 a year. So the total investment without cost of money or inflation or whatever, it's a few years ago now, uh, um, let's assume it's 4,000 euros. 150 times 5 plus the car, uh, plus the, uh, the, the normal costs. If you divide 4,000 euros, and I did in the corner of the shop, by 90, I got 45 euros per cut. And I'm thinking... I can get someone else to do it for that. So what I realized was I wasn't spending enough time with my wife or with the boys. So how can I do that and keep fit and get that buzz I have after exercise? And I realized it's a bicycle. We can go cycling together. We can have adventures together. We can have picnics. I will feel good afterwards, I will spend time with them, and everyone will be happy, and the bicycle will be a lot less than a lawnmower. But the best bit is, Roger still cuts the grass himself. Oh, I have someone who does that for me.